Hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And so today you can see I'm not in the pantry, the kitchen. I'm in my dining room and I've got a project. As I've been doing my home improvement stuff around the house, I have started looking at pieces of furniture that I wanted to replace or get rid of. And then I started thinking, well, some of these could be refurbished into a new, new look for me and um, not necessarily have to go spend a lot of money somewhere else to buy a new piece of furniture. So that being said, I'm going to start with this. I did do a couple picture frames that were kind of the old school oak and in my hallway and it just, they came out beautiful. Chalk painting. If you've never heard of it, it's been around a long time, but it is a fun way to do it because the prep work is so minimal. The only prep work you really need is to clean your piece of furniture or whatever you're going to be painting. And you can paint over, chalk paint over any surface. So this particular high chair scoots up to your dining room table. And my kids grew up with this. They didn't have the plastic and metal high chair with a tray. Um, this is where they learned to eat and they're both grown and I'm not going to say how old they are. <laughs> Anyways, they have children of their own. Uh, so it has some family history. It's got two marks from numerous puppies that we've had over the years. There's little teeth marks back here. I'm not sure. I mean, there's dings and nicks in it, but it all has history to it. So I'm going to try to revive this piece that it sits in the corner in my dining room. And I, I just have been looking at it going, I really don't need that. but. Then again, I kind of like the history it has. So that being said, we're going to chalk paint this and I want a two layer paint effect. And I'm going to distress it and antique it. And the transformation is going to be so much fun. And you can literally do this in an afternoon. I'm starting at two o'clock in the afternoon and um, we're going to paint the first coat is going to be an inexpensive paint because chalk paint can go over any surface. So why can't it go over any other chalk paint? Correct. So I've got an inexpensive under $6 bottle of Waverly chalk paint that I'm going to use for my base coat. And it's a really pretty truffle brown. And that's what I did my picture frames in in the hall and distressed them. Took, you know, the old light oak frames, took that and transformed it and made them brand new. I have a whole new look in that hallway. So um, this is really fun to use. You're going to need an acrylic brush. Now I did buy um, one of Amy Howard's brushes for larger projects and for, you know, larger areas. I might use it later, but for right now, that's what I'm using. And then you want, I've got a clear wax and a dark wax, and that's going to be the antiquing part at the end. Over the top of the brown though, I've got Amy Howard's linen. And when you get this paint, you have to vigorously shake it because the chalk, what makes it chalky settles to the bottom and separates. So you want to shake it very, very good and for like two minutes straight. Just make sure it's really shook well and then stir it up real well. But chalk paint dries fast. It doesn't require any sanding to prep for it. And if you've watched any videos, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just using a paper bowl because this is a little hard to dip in. And we're going to put the first coat on. And honestly and truly, it couldn't be easier. If you have any hardware, you can either paint right over it or you can um, go ahead and put new hardware on. How It's really... It's uh, the world is your pickle when it comes to this kind of stuff. And you want kind of a thin coat just uh, so you don't leave a lot of brush strokes. But honestly, that's also up to you. If you want it thick and you want some, some more character added to your piece, then go for it. So let me get to painting. I'm going to bring you in for a quick close up so you can see close up the dings and marks before I paint and get it covered up. and. Uh, See, like right here, you can see where this has got a big chip out of it and there's dings and marks, but that's really what's going to give it that vintage look when it's all said and done. And it's on both sides of this uh, little rail where their little feet sit. And then um, some chew marks in the back. I think that's really the only damage, it's still in pretty good sturdy shape. So we're going to get to painting. And like right there, I'll give you a look at how easy this chalk paint goes on. It covers really, really well. There's no odor. Um, it washes up with soap and water. I mean, how could you ask for anything more forgiving? And if you 
are uh, not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, so you can be notified whenever I upload a video. But if you like this kind of stuff, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section that you'd like to see more and I'll bring you along. And then the other thing I want you to do is go down in the about section, check the links that I've left for you and I'll try to leave you a link to um, either this paint or, and I'll give you Annie Sloan's website. Uh, they're both comparably priced. Uh, Annie Sloan doesn't sell to just anyone and just everywhere. So um, I would have to go to Vegas or Col California. But uh, I think I like Amy Howard's better because I can leave it a dry chalk finish if I want to. And you can't do that with Annie's. You've got to seal it with the wax. So, all right, I'm going to get this done. Okay, so this, I've been working on this for a whole 15 minutes now and I'm almost done. But what I'm going to do, because this paint dries so fast, and you're going to find it's easier to take some paint, get it on your brush, kind of offload it, so you're almost dry brushing it on, so you don't get big drip marks and or um, spots that you have to go back over. Um, if you see a spot thin, then you just go back over and get it when you see it. But that's how easy it is. As soon as I get this top done, then I'm going to flip it over and I am going to do the underside of everything. And you'll want to look at your piece uh, three or four times because it's very easy to miss a little piece. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. Just stress right through it and you'll be fine. All right, guys. Ah, about 15 more minutes and we're going to be putting the second coat on. Yay! Okay, so I've done the underside of my chair, the whole underneath, um, everything. And I did that because it was done originally and I want it to look good no matter how it's sitting um, for future. And this whole chair only took less than half of an eight ounce, less than four ounces of paint. So you really can stretch this a long way. So when you're thinking a quart of paint being $35, um, you know, there's ways to stretch it. Get the cheaper one if you want a two color effect. and. Uh, you know, they go a long ways. I'll be able to do a couple pieces of furniture with this particular linen color. Excuse my dogs in the background, but they're playing. So I'm going to let this dry completely. I'm going to go start some dinner and uh, I'll so be So my chairs had time to dry. I've had time to change clothes. I was in a little bit of a hurry and I thought, you know, I better change before I get paint all over me. Um, we've had this sitting here a half hour. It took me a half hour total to do the whole chair. And, well, actually, I mean, turning it over, letting it dry enough to turn it over and stuff. So it was like a half hour, but actuality painting, actual painting time was about up to 20 minutes. So now our chair is ready for its second coat. And I'm going to use Amy Howard's uh, chalk paint. And the reason I chose this, opposed to waiting for a different kind of chalk paint, is I can leave it this chalky finish, which for some pieces that might be okay, or for... Um, I've got a picture frame that has a chalk finish that I really like and it's kind of distressed. Um, so depending on the look that you're going for. Uh, this particular color is called linen. Now you can mix her colors together and create your own colors or you can customize quartz, not the small ones. They can't be mixed into, uh, you know, to give you a, um, a custom color. But for quartz, you can pick anybody else's color swatch and say, can you make me this? And they can do it, which is really nice. And I just got a custom quart of red, and it's a uh, Russian red, I think is what they called it. But it's a deep, rich red. And I've got some pieces coming up that are going to be in this, and it's going to be outstanding. So this particular color, linen, is just beautiful. It's soft, off-white. I think it's going to make this piece just pop. And... I'm already getting paint on me. There was a wet spot right there. <laughs> That's okay. At least I didn't get it on my clothes. So I know these legs are dry and these railings are dry. I'm going to start there and the top of my seat is dry. So I'll start there and while I'm going, this is going to be going as well. And go ahead and um, I'm doing it right out of the container. And you're going to put your coat on. Oh, I'm so excited for this. It's going to be just fantastic. And I'll bring you in 
just so you can get a close-up of what this looks like. And there's different techniques you can use for um, getting your uh, the look of your paint if you want brush strokes in there. Um, just so when you do the extra distressing or you know um, antiquing, it'll it'll give it a different effect. So I don't mind if there's brush strokes on here at all because this has teeth marks on it. <laughs> so I'm pretty good with brush strokes. And if you get any on your surface that you don't want, just get a damp cloth and wipe it right off. And this table here, I haven't quite decided what to do, but I want a new dining table and we are mismatched on chairs. I might take the leaf out and redo this table and four of the best chairs and then um, sell it as a vintage piece instead of, you know, giving it away basically. Uh, might be a little bit of work, but it might be worth it. So we'll see. We'll see how, uh, how much I want to do <laughs> to get rid of it. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to keep painting. I'm, I'm not sure if you can, can actually see. tell how chalky this is, but it's a very flat, chalky um, texture to it. Smooth, but it's, it's got that flat feel on its own and, and a very flat, non-reflective um, surface on it by itself. So that's really what you've got with these kind of chalk paints until you wax them. And so um, just going to keep painting here and I can't wait to finish this. That's the fun thing about this is you can literally do a piece in an afternoon and get it all done, completed and ready to cure. And the curing thing is the wax has to cure. It doesn't necessarily have to harden, but it really has to latch onto the surface and um, everything underneath to really set and dry. So if you were doing this to resale, I would not uh, let a piece go. Um, if I was going to sell this, let's say, this piece, I wouldn't let it go until it had been completed for three days and uh, it was really well cured because you want the surfaces uh, ready for use, if that makes sense. So, so anyway, there you go. Hope you like last these tutorials. Night I finished the painting part of this project. And today, I, because my lighting was getting bad, I want to be able to see it. And because you're putting a clear wax on, you want to be able to see it uh, in good lighting. So I've got my clear wax here, which is kind of like a, well, I know it has beeswax in there. And you're just going to take small sections, and less is more in this case. Just small sections and spread it on a real thin layer. Um, and when you watch any of Annie Sloan's instructional videos, she describes it as putting on hand lotion. You put it on um, like you would put hand lotion on. If you put too much all day long, you're like, ew. So you don't want to do that. So you're spreading this a thin layer. It's going to sit on here for 20 minutes. And then I can actually come back and buff it and get a nice little shine to it. But I'm also going to come back and distress it at that point. So you can distress before you wax, and I've done that. Uh, but what happens when you do that is um, you get a lot of dust. You don't get as much dust to clean up before you start your antiquing when you do it this way. So if that makes sense to you. So I will bring you back when we are, or I am, I always say we, and it's always just me, but <laughs> when I am, uh, putting or distressing it and all you're going to do when you buff is come back here with a clean towel and you're going to get in here and really give it a good rub down and that's going to get the excess wax off it is also going to um, give you a nice shine but you want to let it sit for about 20 minutes so let me show you what distressing looks like on a picture frame <coughs> and then you can see just going to show you like the corners. So you can see that um, that distressing, and now this one I did before I uh, did the waxing, but it's got a nice sheen to it now, as you can see. Okay. All right, guys. I'll All right. Back. So I've got the wax on, let it sit, and then you're when you buff it, it's going to feel kind of tacky, not sticky, but tacky, like it, it, it. When you buff it, 
buff it like you were shining a shoe and until it just is slick and you get a little sheen to it. Not super shiny, but definitely a nice sheen. And I love the seat of this. I don't know if you'll be able to catch it on camera, but the seat has some brush strokes going both ways. It really looks rustic already. And so you wanna get uh, sandpaper, and I'm using 100 grit sandpaper. Um, you could use those sanding blocks. They're kind of expensive. And everywhere the little chair would get stress or wear marks, we're gonna go ahead and go in and get it buffed. And before, or sanded, distress it. Before you do a spot, make sure you do not feel tackiness. And I did not buff this, so right here I've gotta go ahead and get this buffed because it still feels, you can feel the tack. And that's a good sign that it's ready for you, now it looks better, for you to go ahead and distress. So, I'm gonna bring you in and we're gonna go ahead and get this All right, done. So this is the little uh, spot where the, their feet go and it's already chewed up. So I really wanna distress around those spots. All the edges, the raised edges, go ahead. And depending on how far down you wanna go, you can go just to the brown that's underneath or you can go all the way to the bare wood. And in some spots, I'm definitely going down to bare because I wanna, I really wanna show like this piece has been well used. <laughs> and it really has. It just, uh, my kids were not that hard on it. I don't know if you can see how it's starting to take shape there. But any of your edges and corners can be distressed and should be where natural wear would happen. Oh yeah, now see that coming along? I hope you can see that. That looks very cool right there, the way it is. Some of it is down to bare wood, some's down to the other uh, paint. So keep going across there. And the stress away. This is kind of fun and this is where you can get very creative because how little or how much you do is completely up to you. And even on the top where they put their little feet, I'm gonna put some worn, like it might have gone down to the paint on the flat surface. All right, let's get, get going up to a different spot here. I really like the way that looks. It looks very naturally worn and oh, how fun is this? And this big chewed up spot there what character it's giving this piece. Look at that, nice. Get creative. There's no rule of thumb. I will tell you though, this, uh, it, you got to put a little bit of elbow grease into it to get through that. Oh, look at that. Now that's going to give it some character. Look. All right. I really like that. All right. Okay. So. I'm gonna continue to distress and I'll bring you back when I've completed the chair okay, the way guys, I want it. I hope you can see all the distressing that I've done 
It really looks worn in all the right places. I'm super excited about how this piece is coming out. And it's turning a piece of furniture that I really never liked the looks of into something I'm gonna love to have sitting here with all the memories that it has. And um, I've even got some dis distressing on the seat here and left a lot of the brush strokes in there. If you don't like to see the brush strokes, you can certainly sand just with less pressure, but I had to change out of my sweatshirt because it's a workout <laughs> to get the, what you want. And, and you really can use your artistic um, creative juices, if you will, uh, to, on a piece like this. So let me bring you in and show you up close before I start my... Um, so here's the little foot area and very fine little dents and dings and and you can actually dent your item up if it's not got enough character. This one absolutely did have enough. So I left it, but you get your wear marks on the front of your legs and anywhere there might be uh, wear marks. And then up here, also got some good. And even in the back, um, down here on the railings and on the back here. Sorry, don't, I don't do this very well. But I did want to vlog this because I get asked all the time, please show us what you do when you're not on do creating <laughs> food. So there you go. Anyway, very, very fun project. So if you have some projects you'd like to do, I highly encourage you getting them done. Get going on them. So you're gonna dust, uh, you're gonna have a lot of dust. I vacuumed up here and um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get to antiquing this because even though now it looks very rustic and almost antiqued, it uh, needs to be antiqued with the dark wax to give it an aged, almost a tea, stained look so and that's what I'm going for. All right, so guys. to do the dark wax you want to work in real small areas and this is what it looks like okay and on the rag nice clean rag so I'm going to start here on this distressed area and you're just going to put it on there get it down in those cracks and again I've ordered a um, waxing brush but it isn't here yet, so we're just gonna do it this way. And as you are applying it, you're gonna be, oh, look at that. Look how cool that looks already. Oh my gosh, just fantastic. It's making this chair look <laughs> as old as it is. <laughs> I love, love it. And again, as much or as little as you like, I mean, if you really want to leave a lot of the dark on there, that's totally up to you. I want a fair amount, but I don't want it to look necessarily dirty. So there you go. Doesn't that look great? It's got, you can see the difference in the color between there and there. It's really got that tea stained look and I'm super happy with it. So I'm going to continue on and when I finish the piece I'll take some pictures and give you a close up of what All happened. right, so I finally finished and it took a long time to sand it and then to antique it and um, I, I, I wanted it to look old and, and look like it needed some uh, or had been loved very much throughout the years and I think I've achieved it. It totally transformed this chair into a shabby chic antique piece that I absolutely love. And so I hope that it inspires you to take a piece of furniture that you're not that fond of and maybe transform it into something you absolutely love. I cannot wait till my kids see this and um, see what their reaction is to their high chair that they grew up with and <laughs> see how they respond to what I did with it. Because who knows, you never know. But I'm gonna bring you in for a close up and let you see everything as I let you go. And um, so hopefully the lighting is good enough for you to see all the detail and wear and doesn't that look rustic and shabby chic? Oh my gosh, I love this seat. Okay, 
I'm going to try to tip this. The seat has a lot of character. Where I sanded some smooth, it would be where butt, little butts would rub and smooth out the paint and then a little bit of wear mark there. I just love it. And let me put that down. And I really like the little back rail as well. It just, it really took on a whole new character and it's got a whole new life ahead of it. In fact, oh yes, I can't wait for my grandbaby to come over and sit in the new height chair. A little rustic, shabby chic, antique. All right guys, I love distressed furniture so if you like this video I hope you give me a thumbs up and as always guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe and or home improvement project and or puppies. No, I'm not having puppies again yet. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.